I'll come right out and say it. I strongly, strongly, strongly urge you to not take an iron supplement unless you absolutely have a viable reason to. Okay, iron is not as simple as it seems. We have to remember one very important thing. Iron donates electrons to oxygen. Okay, what does that mean? It means that when iron donates an electron to oxygen, it makes that oxygen molecule go crazy. And if you think of your body like a pinball machine and the ball is oxygen, once it gets acted upon by an additional electron and turns into sort of a rogue oxygen, let's just call it that, I don't know, and it bounces around the pinball machine and it lights it up like crazy, all those lights and dings and bells and whistles, that is reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress ping-ponging around in your body. I know that is not scientifically accurate as far as an illustration is concerned, but it's the best way that I can get it across. Iron in excess is hugely problematic. There is a very key solution, and I'm gonna give you a few different ways that you can get it in and when you can get it in, in just a moment. After today's video, I put a link down below for a free sample variety pack of Element Electrolytes. No, electrolytes are not the answer as a replacement to iron, but they are minerals, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and Element has it all. 1,000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium, and 60 milligrams magnesium. A nice ratio, especially if you're sweating. But what makes it amazing is the flavors. Completely fasting friendly, it won't break a fast. You can have it on an empty stomach. Practically no calories, some flavors have no calories. But you've got citrus salt, you've got mango chili, you've got chocolate salt, you've got grapefruit salt, you've got all kinds of delicious flavors and it keeps you satiated. Salt affects the brain in an interesting way that might make you curb your cravings a little bit more. So anyhow, that link down below gets you a free sample variety pack with any purchase. So once you make a purchase, you get a free variety pack. That link is down below, drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. I'm gonna share with you what it is I'm talking about, but it is important that you watch the entirety of this video to see how to, how to implement it. I'm talking about lactoferrin, and I don't want you to go out and buy a lactoferrin supplement. They do exist, but that's not what I'm after. I'm gonna tell you the better ways to get it. Lactoferrin counterbalances iron. So lactoferrin, based upon the literature, is stronger at binding to iron than transferritin. Transferritin is the natural existing ability to bind iron in our body. But lactoferrin is somewhat of an indigestible protein that we get from milk, we get from whey protein concentrate, we can get from colostrum, we get from some other dairy products, but also now we're seeing in the literature, as seen in the study published in Molecules, our organs will actually produce it in sort of a response to threats. Because pathogens in our body will actually feed on iron. Okay, so they actually feed on iron and oxygen can feed from iron and this can lead to all kinds of issues. So I wanna relay one really important study here that's probably the most important takeaway. It was a study that was published in Nutrients and they had subjects consume either an iron supplement or lactoferrin. Lactoferrin has nothing to do with iron other than the fact that it's a whey protein. Well, it has ferrin in the name, right? But it obviously has an impact on iron, but it's not direct iron. So lactoferrin versus direct iron supplement. The lactoferrin increased serum iron levels more than the iron itself. It increased red blood cell count more than iron. It increased hemoglobin more than iron. And it ended up decreasing inflammation and actually reducing the absorption of what's called fractional iron, which is sort of the random components of iron that we definitely don't wanna just have a willy-nilly absorption of. People don't realize that when iron donates an electron to oxygen, how much havoc this can wreak. If you've ever noticed when you've gotten sick, if you've ever had blood work done, your iron levels tend to drop. That's because pathogens will feed off of iron. They will take electrons from the iron, and this can be problematic. It also has to do with the oxygen and some of the redux and all this, which is exceptionally complicated and beyond my pay grade as well. But what we have found now is that taking iron supplements willy-nilly can be problematic because what we need is a delicate balance of bound iron and unbound iron in the body, not just a random surplus of iron. What happens, and I've talked about this probably at nauseum on my channel over the last decade, what happens if you leave a big anvil or an iron something out in, I don't know, the elements? It's gonna rust, right? It's gonna oxidize. It's gonna oxidize a lot. And if you leave a, you know, a beautiful classic car on the salty coast, right? You're gonna have salt and you're gonna have oxygen, you're gonna have uh, all of this. The uh, pieces of the iron of the chassis are actually going to corrode. 
This, in essence, kind of happens in your body too. And it seems as though lactoferrin is a much better way to get this sort of iron balancing in. Now there was a study that took a look at acne that I found was very, very interesting. And it gives an indicator of sort of the bacterial component here. It was published in the journal Nutrition and it took a look at subjects that consumed fermented milk that had 200 grams of lactoferrin added compared to just straight fermented milk. And they were subjects that had acne. There was a 38.6% reduction in acne lesions and an overall 20% reduction in acne overall. More than likely, it has to do with the bacteria. Okay, because lactoferrin seems to block the carbohydrate consumption of certain bacteria, and also breaks down the overall uh, shell of a gram-negative bacteria, bad bacteria. So in this case, huge benefits on acne. Now we also see that there's huge benefits when it comes down to like inflammatory conditions, such as like psoriasis and stuff as well, which means that maybe there's something going on in the inflammatory pathway. Now, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because this isn't a video particularly about this, but also huge improvements with respiratory tract infections as well. There was a study that was published in Clinical Nutrition, ESPEN, that took a look at six systematic reviews, randomized control trials, and it found that when lactoferrin was consumed or present or just added in, there was a clinically significant improvement in overall instances of respiratory tract infection, so much to the point they were able to discard or disqualify the quote unquote null hypothesis, meaning they could no longer say that lactoferrin has a null impact when it comes down to RTIs. My point in saying this is that if we were just taking iron supplements to like fix all of our issues and make ourselves not anemic, I think we need to look beyond that, right? We have to remember that what we know about iron is just the very tip of the iceberg. And it's better to get our nutrition in line so that we have the proper counterbalancing. So when do you get this in and how do you get the proper amounts of it? The best way to get lactoferrin is going to be by utilizing simple whey protein concentrate. And I did a video kind of explaining how I had to change my tune when it came down to whey protein. I've always been a whey protein isolate guy at least for the last like 12, 13 years because I like the pure protein aspect. I didn't care about the other aspects. I wanted the fitness and body composition benefit. The whey protein concentrate has the lactoferrin. Also colostrum, but very difficult to get good quality colostrum these days. So colostrum has a huge benefit when it comes down to lactoferrin. You can take a direct lactoferrin supplement. You can also consume raw milk if you're in a state where you can get it. Uh, regular milk has it, but not nearly as much as like say whey protein concentrate would. Uh, any kind of like whole food form of dairy is going to have a little bit of lactoferrin, but you want to go for the ones that have the higher amount. So if you need to supplement lactoferrin, that's fine. Most evidence suggests about 100 to 200 grams of lactoferrin, and you're going to get close to that in a couple of protein shakes. So if you're taking like a good whey protein concentrate, I would recommend taking that along with food for potentially better absorption and better utilization. But we want the food matrix. We want food in its whole form. And that's why whey protein concentrate in this case is very effective. So if you're someone that says, hey, I'm on the fence, maybe I wanna take an iron supplement, maybe I feel fatigued, maybe, I would highly recommend that you have whey protein concentrate first and see if your potential feelings improve, your recovery improves, and yada yada. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.